Well, the very best healthcare system in the world is South Central Foundation's NUCA system of care, which is the best example of an aspirational healthcare system. They're, only, they're the only healthcare system that has won the president's Malcolm Baldrige Award twice, once in 2011 and again in 2017. Countries come from all over the world to learn how the NUCA system of care can be so much better than all the other systems. Half the cost with far better outcomes. I'm very pleased to have as my guest panelist today a representative from the South Central Foundation, Rachel Saldana, the Senior Business Development Advisor for the NUCA Learning Institute. Rachel, thank you for joining me today. And would you like to take just a couple minutes and introduce yourself? Absolutely, and, and thank you so much, Daryl, for having me on uh, the call this morning or afternoon for you. Um, I'm excited to be here um, all the way in Alaska. Um, and, you know, my name is, uh, as you said, Rachel Saldana. I'm one of the senior business development advisors here at South Central Foundation Nuka Learning Institute. I have been working with South Central Foundation for 10 and a half years, and my role in the Learning Institute is working with external clients interested in learning more about our healthcare system and the work that we do here here at SCF that makes us so unique um, with a relationship-based focus and servicing 65,000 Alaska Native American Indian people. Well, and let's start maybe, Rachel, by sharing how did you get involved in the first place? How, how long have you been involved in this system and, and how did you first get involved? You know, it's it's really funny, Daryl. So I am a uh, tribally enrolled Samish Indian tribal member um, out of Anacortes, Washington, and I have been a customer owner uh, within the system. Um, a lot of people wonder what a customer owner is. That's what we refer our patients to, is that they're customer owners within the system. Um, so at the time, um, you know, as a young teen, I was first starting college and I had come in to get a dental cleaning. And the hygienist at the time said, hey, I see that you're going to college. What are you doing? And I said, well, I want to be a dental hygienist, but you know, I'm, you know, just finishing up science prereqs. And she said, oh my goodness, you would be fantastic. You need to join our dental assistant training program. We're partnered with uh, the, you know, local university here. Um, you would be able to meet, connect, um, build relationships with those folks and, you know, get an idea of how our system works. So I said, sure, I'll try it. Um, I ended up doing the five month program, became a dental assistant, um, got to travel out to some of our remote villages, work with, directly with our customer owners. Um, here in Anchorage is our main hub location. Um, and it was a lot of fun, a lot of really great opportunities, um, You know, learning to work with our customer owners, learning all of the different unique challenges that we face here in Alaska and servicing customer owners. Um, but, you know, one of the things that was exciting was, is I learned that dental hygiene was not my path. And at the time I had a manager that was really passionate about, you know, growing our own, um, you know, helping me to develop my skills and said, hey, you're great working with people. Have you ever thought of healthcare management? And so there that kind of led to my path of healthcare management. Um, and then I worked in quality improvement for dental services for a few years um, and then was recruited into the Learning Institute, um, kind of acting as our um, on a sales role, uh, working with our system, working with folks interested in learning more about how they could partner with us um, to implement services and things that we're doing here at SCF um, in their system. Nice. So give us just kind of a, an overview of what is the NUCA system of care. I know that you've basically taken healthcare and turned it upside down, but, but I'd love for you to share a summary of what is it? Absolutely. I'd be, I'd be happy to do that. So uh, South Central Foundation uh, NUCA system of care, um, I truly believe started back in the early 80s um, when we took over um, health care from the federal government. So that's uh, we tribally compacted and stated, hey, we are ready to take over the funds from Indian Health Services and turn this into something that we want our health care system to be. Um, and in doing so, our leadership at the time, we've had a lot of longevity and leadership. Um, a lot of our VPs, CEOs have been here, you know, 20, 30 plus years um, so they had a vision and it was what did the customer owners want to see in a healthcare system and so when we did the community needs assessment at that time you know they said customers what do you want to see um, you know some of the things were hey we want better access to care you know we don't want to you know be in the emergency room for nine hours waiting to be seen by our provider we want to know that 
you know, we're being heard when we, you know, see our provider. We want to know that our voices are heard and not only that, but our opinions matter and we have voice in the services that we receive. Another thing was cultural. You know, we want to feel that our culture is respected. We don't want to feel ashamed about sharing our culture and sharing, um, you know, the services and, you know, things that we can bring to the table, um, both traditionally, non-traditional um, to healthcare. And so, when you know we really looked at those things um, a lot of social determinants as well um, you know suicide domestic violence child sexual abuse is were the highest in the nation for those things and a lot of folks don't realize that and that was something that our community was saying hey we want to address these things at you know a forefront and so at that time it was what does redesign look like you know, how do we build it around the customer owner's needs? And we con consistently kept that in mind. Uh, when you look at the mission vision of our organization, our goals are a native community that enjoys physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual wellness. It's a whole person centered approach to how we look at our customer owners. Uh, not only that, uh, you look at our um, goals, our operational principles, spell out relationships. So everything that we do here at SCF is about relationships, around the family. Um, I love, you know, as a customer owner, my provider, he knows me, he knows my dad, he knows my sister, my brother, and he laughs, you know, he says, I will never test you guys for your vitamin D levels because I know you guys all have ridiculous vitamin D levels. And, you know, so it's just funny because, uh -huh. you know, we have that really great relationship, um, you know, not only as a family, but he knows us, he knows kind of our background and history. And so, SEF is just a special place in that we've developed integrated care teams. So as a customer owner, I have direct access to nurse case manage, my nurse case manager. I can call her at any time. Um, I remember as a new mom, um, you know, not, you know, knowing or feeling confident in my skills and what I was doing. And so I would call my nurse case manager and be, hey, is this normal that my baby cries about this? And she would just reaffirm me and tell me, yes, you're doing the right thing, Rachel. And so just knowing that I had that um, ability and that um, someone to rely on, you know, in my time of need. And not only that, just having access to care. I mean, I have never experienced in, you know, my 30 plus years on this earth uh, <laughs> that, I've always had direct access to care. I can call and have an appointment same day every single time. Um, I not only have access to my provider team, but I have access to dietitians. Um, I have access to, um, you know, uh, case management support, um, psychiatry, um, you know, behavioral health services. All of these services are right at the hand, um, and I don't even have to leave the clinic. So I think that's what makes you know SCF unique is is we've really kind of reevaluated what are the services that we offer and how can we best um, you know make that accessible and easy um, for our customers. Fantastic! I, I love um, the fact that it's so focused on the person. You know, yes. Dr. Evie, Vice President of Medical Services, uses the comment that. Traditional healthcare, like we're used to in the lower 48, is very much the medical institution is there with all the knowledge and science, and people come to it to be benefactors of it. And generally, after they fall off the cliff, where what Nick has done is turned that upside down and said, No, what if we actually put the customer owner as the focus and the healthcare system is there to support them? And I think, gee, you know, having run hospitals in the past and having left the treatment side, it's like, that's what we need. We need a system that's focused on the person, not on the system, and people just coming to be the benefactors of the system and the relationship. So, you know, his comment and your comment about a, a, a very integrated primary, I love, I love how he describes a massively powerful primary care system. <laughs> and one of, your, one of your pillars that you built from the very beginning based on your studies of what the customer wanted was that it's immediate access. You know, if someone needs health care, they don't need to wait five days or three days. They, Your commitment was give them a team who knows their situation. They can call somebody on that team and get access immediately. I think that's, it's like, wouldn't we all want health care to work that way? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I even laugh. Um, I, I always love to tell this story. I mean, our provider teams are so interwoven into the relationship piece. I one time was in the airport flying back from Portland, Oregon to Anchorage, Alaska, and my provider saw me in the line on the airplane and said, Rachel, I have been trying to get a hold of you. You're supposed to come back and see me after your blood work and you haven't called me yet. What's going on? <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was like, I'll call you on Monday when I get back. <laughs> that speaks I mean, that's volumes. How that yep. speaks <laughs> volumes. And, and the only way that happens is if your primary care provider doesn't have 5,000 people in their Absolutely. practice, which is, you know, three to 5,000 people is not uncommon, you know, in a deficit-based healthcare system because you're only helping the people who have a symptom today and show up for a quick, you know, diagnosis and a treatment plan. Where in your system, what's like a thousand to twelve hundred people per provider, and and it's proactive. It's like, okay, I'm going to get to know. I love the storytelling of your culture and and the way your system works. It's about tell me your story. I want to know you. I don't just want to know what the pain today is. I want to know your story. Like in your case, they know that your whole generations, you know, good vitamin D. It's yep. getting that kind of relationship back into healthcare that's so exciting and so neat about what you've developed. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I think, too, one of the unique things with SCF Daryl is, is we spend a lot of intentionality and time uh, with our employees in training them in relationships. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one of the big things that we do have is our core concepts uh, training, which is a three day training where we just talk about relationships. What is your story? What's my story? Um, how does your story impact who you are and how you respond to others? How does my story impact how I respond to others and how I interact with other people? And so there's a lot of intentionality and things that we do around training and making sure that our employees are equipped to build relationships with our customers in, in a healthy um, way in you know responding to their stories and, and listening to what they have to say. Um, but then again, that also translates translates into our employee interactions. Um, you know, we have a 95% employee satisfaction, 97% customer owner satisfaction rate. And I do believe it is because SEF spends a lot of time in focusing on that relationship piece and how we build those. Well, and let's talk about why that's so important. And I love this, the analogy that Dr. Eby uses of the rock and the target. You know, <laughs> culture is so often built around uh, it's a science, and we're going to figure out the best science to deal with the problem. Mm -hmm. And and if I'm comatose and end up at the emergency room, it's like, yeah, apply all the science you can because I'm I'm out. You know, put me back together again. But that only represents 20% of healthcare. If you yeah. really look at the full spectrum of healthcare, 80%. And, and of course, the analogy is that the 20% is throwing a rock at a target. And I can get really good at throwing a rock at a target and hitting it because it's science. But the other 80% is like throwing a live bird at the target. Yes. It's like that bird's going to go where that bird wants. And I can throw that bird as many times as I want. But unless I build a relationship, unless I really understand how important it is to drive behavior change and how yeah. important it is to understand where the person's coming from, so that you put the birdhouse at the target and they want to feed the babies at the target. You gotta, you gotta approach the 80%. And quite honestly, I have been for years feeling like that's the biggest miss in deficit-based healthcare is, is it's all science. It's like, let's give all the accolades and all the training, you know, with the best science as possible. And yes, that has a place, but we're missing the 80% that gets, gets to where the person is and helping the person make a change. And, and they're, like you said, they're the customer owner. They have control and yep. they're going to go where they want to go. And you can provide the best treatment plan in the world. But as your, I don't know if you call it your motto or your, your mantra, but I love the thing that it's more important to engage change in every interaction with the participant or a member than it is to create the perfect treatment plan. I love that concept. It's an appreciation for the 80%. That's where healthcare needs to go. Absolutely. No, 100% agree. And, um, you know, it just is truly amazing to see, you know, the work that we've been able to do in just being able to listen and for people to feel heard, uh, you know, and that's where, you know, a lot of the training comes in is, is, you know, when I'm sitting there hearing somebody's story, you know, maybe they're telling that story for the hundredth time or, you know, whatnot, but how, how am I interacting? You know, what is my body language telling them? Am I engaging in what they're saying or am I, you know, sitting typing on my computer? You know, how am I engaging with them? And, and those are some really important components to, you know, making sure that pe people feel heard and that you're invested in, in what they're what they're saying. I've used the analogy many times that 
deficit-based healthcare, which is what we're so used to across the world, is like driving a car with four blown out tires. And often we're driving it in the wrong direction. Yes. And those four tires are primary care is badly broken. We don't help people navigate and advocate for people through this very complicated system. We're not helping people change behavior, which is the root of almost all healthcare problems. And we're not addressing mental health appropriately, which is the number one biggest risk factor. And when you look at what the NUCA system of care has done, it's like, we filled up all four tires. Yes. And we've driven the car in the right direction. <laughs> Absolutely, you are, you are correct, <laughs> you are correct. So congratulations. So I wanna ask attendee, or just mention that if any attendees have any questions during this webinar, please feel free to ask those questions. I'll read them and we can address them. But let's take some time right now, Rachel, and talk about your upcoming conference. Um, let's talk about uh, when it's happening and a little bit about the conference. Absolutely. So we have our annual uh, NUCA conference that we normally host in June in Anchorage, Alaska, but due to COVID and, uh, you know, the pandemic restrictions of travel and, and just, um, you know, maintaining safe distance, uh, we've gone virtual. And so we have our upcoming conference, uh, February 8th, 9th, and 10th is our general uh, NUCA conference, uh, where folks can kind of just get a deeper dive into overall what our healthcare system looks like. Um, we'll have different uh, components not only learning about an overview and history of our organization, but kind of just diving deeper into some of our primary care integrated models, how we've integrated behavioral health services, um, human resources, our strategic planning process. Um, a lot of people, you know, I always find it interesting, but a lot of people are always like, well, how are your integrated care team panels set up? You know, like we want to know the numbers, like how many impaneled, how many, you know, uh, what's the ratio? And I always tell people that it's it's so interwoven that you won't understand how interwoven it is. It's not just numbers, you know, it's interwoven into us onboarding employees, how we integrate human resources to how we integrate trainings um, into our primary care team panels. And it's so much more complex than just, hey, we've got four people working in a room together as a team and they're gonna manage this panel. So being able to come to the NUCA conference, you're gonna get a better understanding of how all of our key work systems are interwoven together to create the NUCA system of care. So it's a great opportunity. Um, but after the general conference, we do have some intensives. Uh, so I talked a little bit earlier about core concepts, which is our um, you know, relationship-based um, you know, training on how we approach um, relationships at SCF. So we're doing a two-day intensive and that's on the 11th and 12th. Um, Great opportunity to learn about how we share story at SCF, how we engage in story and respond um, healthy and, and to that story. Um, and then we also have an integrated uh, care team um, intensive as well um, that's taking place simultaneously with that core concepts training if folks are interested in diving a little bit deeper into how our integrated care teams are structured and what those roles and responsibilities look like. So share kind of the, di the, the um structure of an intensive is it going to be like a zoom meeting where everybody's kind of on a virtual interaction give me a little bit of ideas to what that intensive looks like absolutely so our intensives um you know again you will be on a zoom um but we also um we do some surveys ahead of time. Um, so there's some intentionality around understanding um, kind of your personality. So we do um, a personality test prior to participating in that integrated care team model, um, just to be able to understand um, how you work with others, um, how, what your style, work styles are um, and whatnot. But then also when you come into the training, again, you'll receive a little bit of um, history on integrated care team model, um, understanding kind of the ins and outs, but then we'll also be separating you guys out into groups. So you'll be having some group discussions, possibly some uh, matching and mirroring, um, some conversations around what does primary care look like at your organization and what components you could potentially see integrating into yours. So a lot of different pieces, but a really great opportunity to dive a little bit deeper into, into what our integrated care team model looks like. And who are the people that generally attend? You know, maybe share what are the different kinds of roles that would be good to attend that, like both the conference as well as those intensives. 
Absolutely. So our general conference, I always say anybody is welcome to attend. Um, a lot of organizations, when they do uh, come to visit with us, they bring, you know, CEOs, uh, you know, directors, administrators. Uh, leadership is always great to receive buy-in to see if this is the healthcare system that you would want to adopt for your organization. Um, you know, and then a lot of our intensives are great for your uh, operations director for primary care, um, your uh, administrator some of your clinicians, uh, nurse case managers, case management support, maybe even some of your entry-level admins, um, because again, all of those roles play an important part in the integrated care team. Um, and then also in our core concepts intensive, that's open to anybody. Um, you know, if you have entry-level staff that maybe is just, you know, needing some, you know, ideas on, on how to build better relationships um, or interact with others, you know, in a more empathetic, compassionate way, um, though that's a great training for just about anybody. Um, and that's also a training that we do require for every single one of our employees at South Central Foundation to go to. Nice. So I know there's that one of the elements of the conference is the culturally appropriate care. Talk a little bit, and you've mentioned it a little bit, but talk a little bit about how critical because you've adopted, because it's primarily a population of Native American Indians, how yeah. or Alaskans, sorry, how do you how do you use the principles you've learned from that to apply to whether it's Sweden or Finland or Canada or United States or you know across the world? Talk a little bit about the examples of how you've incorporated because I love what you've done with all kinds of alternative medicine practitioners, yeah. but it's not about mirroring your program for a different mm -hmm. population. It's about learning the principles of your program and then applying those to the culture wherever you're gonna be. Absolutely. So in our um, consulting approach, we have our ready model, which um, talks about our process and how we work with organizations. Um, and, you know, one of our key things is reaching understanding. So we want to get to know you, your organization. What's your philosophy? Uh, what is it? What are your goals for your organization? What are the cultural pieces that folks want to see integrated into your system? Um, and then also establishing relationships with key folks in your organization to understand that, you know, everybody's on board with with this you know model and again our way is not everybody's way and we recognize that and you know we don't expect you to adopt everything that we do but we we really want to make sure that you know we incorporate the pieces that fit for your system and fit for your people and your cultural components uh, that's a key thing um, but there's a lot of intentionality I mean even you know when we work with an organization we've had the opportunity to work with some uh, organizations in the US that are opening up their first primary care clinic and need Need help in you know facility design and, and we go in and talk about how intentional we are around facility design and incorporating uh, you know cultural artwork and you know mm -hmm. cultural components of you know nature and things into that building design to make it feel warm and you know homey for our customers as they enter into the clinic um, I know it's kind of a long conversation to go into but <laughs> I'll leave it there <laughs> Well, and I think if we look at our typical deficit-based healthcare system, um, often one of the things that's very common with medicine is, uh, I want a health insurance plan to pay for me to go. I want to go wherever I want to go, but because I go to wherever I want to go, it's not very integrated. And I see that one of the big hurdles of really moving into an aspirational healthcare system and, and to operate a more powerful primary care system is this need to be connected you know that it really is let's connect you with a primary care physician or team of practitioners that are yours and get to know you so it's not about today go to you know this one and tomorrow go to that one and the next day go to the other it's like it doesn't work if if it's like why do you want to go wherever i want to go it's okay well let's encourage you or help you understand the value of going to someone who's going to get to know you and I see that as a big difference between what you built and what we have so commonly in the United States. And, and how do we persuade and, and share with people the value of having a real team that's your team? And you've spoken about that a little bit, but maybe in closing, because we're running out of time, just talk about what it's been like for you to grow up in this system of care, knowing that you have someone, not just a telephone book, but literally a person and a team of people who know you and your family. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I, I feel blessed. You know, my sister and I talk all the time because this is the only healthcare system we've known. And, you know, when we hear of our friends, you know, talking about their experiences and they're like, wait, you guys receive what? You know, you guys, you guys get that. You know, we just, we don't even realize it ourselves how blessed we are to receive uh, the services at South Central Foundation. But one of the, you know, key things that I said earlier was, you know, just having kind of that family network. We all know the same provider. Um, he, we have the cell phone numbers. We have our nurse case managers. I have them on my phone. I can call at any time. Um, but, you know, just changing the way even, you know, my kids, you know, having those experiences, you know, growing up in the system, I'm still even connected with the OBGYN nurse that delivered both my children at the hospital and she delivered all my nieces and nephews, you know, so it's just, it's just a family, you know, you kind of create this kind of family network, which is, is really special. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I think is so key is, you know, behavioral health and mental health needs is such a huge thing right now in our country. And, you know, knowing that, you know, April Kyle, our CEO, um, she talks a little bit about how as her, you know, son has grown up in the system, you know, how special it is for him to be able to say, hey, mom, I want to talk to be a, beha a behavioral health consultant. And she's like, well, why? And he's like, well, you know, I want to be able to wear, you know, not wear pull-ups to go spend the night at my friend's house anymore. And so how we're transitioning behavioral services to not be something that, you know, your auntie or uncle needs, but just, you know, kind of a normal day-to-day -day process. Normal. Absolutely. Make it normal. And, you mm -hmm. know, if like my daughter, you know, is struck you know, is struggling, not liking vegetables. I can talk to a dietitian and say, okay, I've tried X, Y, and Z. What recommendations do you have? And just being able to have those resources not only helps me as, as a mom, you know, be a better parent to my kids, but, you know, just in the day-to-day -day life of, you know, knowing that no matter where I'm at or what's going on, I can call and ask questions and, you know, get the help that I need right then and there. So it's, it's truly a blessing. And I, and I feel privileged to be able to have this opportunity to not only work for SCF, but, you know, be a customer. Be a of it. Well, I'm so glad you brought up the mental health because we know that one of the biggest challenges of mental health is that people wait 10 years on average yeah. after mental health symptoms appear before yeah. they're willing to get over that stigma barrier to get help and to reach out for help. Well, that's, that's a huge problem. And that Absolutely. almost 60% of the people never reach out for help. And so Absolutely. what you've incorporated as a part of the basics is that relationship to make it not so stigmatized, make it normal, make it okay to reach out to get it to talk to a behavioral specialist. And I think that's just so commendable. And, and it, it is, it's one of the biggest risk factors in healthcare and people not getting the help to deal with the struggles of emotions and anxieties and stresses and grief. It's just an you know, important part of the healthcare system. Absolutely. And, you know, and I even say too, I mean, you know, there's been times, you know, where I even go into my primary care provider and, you know, maybe I'm stressed with, you know, just life or whatever. And they're like, hey, do you want to talk to somebody today? You know, they can come in and just chat with you. I mean, right then and there. And, you know, yeah. yeah. And a lot of times it's just, okay, you know, reassurance that yes, you're doing the right thing or yes, you're handling it well, or hey, try this, do that. And you mm -hmm. can say, Oh, I feel better. That's it. That's all I needed. And I can <laughs> walk away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like sometimes you just want to be heard. So <laughs> yeah. Rachel, again, thank you so much for being with us today. Really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you so much, Daryl. And I really appreciate you taking the time to, you know, talk with us again um, and just share with folks uh, the relationship based care system that we have here in Anchorage, Alaska. It's my pleasure. All right. We're going to wish everyone a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>